Welcome to Gen Z Hoops, the Gen Z basketball coaching and sports business show. On this podcast, you'll learn from professional players, coaches, and executives from all over the world and see the court in a brand new way. And now, joining you courtside, your Gen Z host, John Hartafillis. Hey, my man, what's going on? Hi, right, what's up, John? Thank you for having me. Dude, it is awesome having you. We've been texting for a while now. It's been a couple months, and you've been such a huge supporter of the show. Literally just reached out based on the show, saying, you know, you, you, enjoy, you liked watching it. And I was kind of, this was when I first, this might have been back going yeah. back to Big Fellas. So yeah. I was blown away at the time that someone was supporting the show as much as you were. Um, and you've been so helpful uh, this whole time. So, number one, thank you so much for that. Uh, but yeah. really excited to dive into your whole career. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I love what you do. I, I came from a blogging background. So, I always have respect for people who just produce. So yeah, you and me as do good stuff and grow. Definitely. So I mean, it's awesome, right? Thinking about right, our, like how maybe right, we've just met, kind of met each other online, right? We're we're here on yeah. Zoom even for the first time. Yeah. Uh, but and it's cool thinking how the relationship can even grow. But talk to us a little bit about maybe. I mean, where did this passion for ball start? I mean, right. I mean, obviously, yeah. you like a show, and you've been able to like, continue it by listening. But maybe where did that all begin for you? Uh, way before the Gen Z hoops, um, back when you maybe first got into into the game of basketball. Yeah, man. A uh, lot of blessing. I it, it all started from Taiwan, half the world away. Small island country outside of Maryland. I grew up there, and uh, I I grew up really shy. And I was I was introduced to a Slam magazine, and I just fell in love with it. And at the time, it was like so early. And and I remember my really first basketball memory was the 2006 Miami Heat championship. And and I was so shy, so I'll just you know read the magazine so religiously. And also that was my way to learn English and just also kind of get away from people. And uh, that's, that's my passion. So that's the super early start for me. Yeah. No, it's awesome. Right. And thinking about how it wasn't even just um, a, a sport, right. It was a whole way for you to get into American culture. Yeah. Right? You're learning the language from reading these slam magazines. I mean, so you mentioned like maybe the first championship you watched. I mean, how did that maybe develop right when you were a kid, maybe that's how, what got you hooked, but how did that develop maybe as you got older and you started seeing how, you know what, maybe I can start working in basketball. Yeah, man. I, I was really fortunate. Uh, my family and I, we got a green card, so we came here before high school, and that was the part when I say, man, I can actually make a living off of sport, so my original goal was going to be a sport researcher, because I was always that shy person on the TV, always watching games, and I would take notes, and I would and take more notes, um, player bio, player reports, breakdowns, tendencies, just for fun. And when I came to the U.S., I started to do that more and more. And I started to have a website because I, I wanted to work towards that career goal beyond the media side. So I would just post so many things um, every day, sit in the same spot, eight hours, 10 hours, just read a lot, watch a lot of games, write more, produce. And that was how I got to know different people in the basketball internet community, including Ray LeBeau, who was on your show. Uh, some of my works got featured on different websites. And um, and a little, a little bit later, um, I uh, somebody reached out to me and say, "Man, Henry, this, you actually write really good analysis. So, you ever thought about doing that on the team side?" And I say, "No, not really, uh, for two reasons. First reason, I I didn't know what kind of jobs are out there. If you're not involved with the team, you wouldn't know video coordinator, advanced scout, personal scout. You wouldn't know." director of basketball operations, AKA the DOPO. So yeah, you, I, I didn't know. My second reason is a lot more personal, but that's what something 2020 taught me. It's okay to be open up a bit, be a bit vulnerable. So man, I will, I'll say this. I, I wasn't initially interested on the team side cause I have the wrong skin color, which makes me a minority minority, which also means I'm a super minority which also means I'm forever foreign. So that being said, that's the, so many reasons against me, just myself, my background is even more. I can sit here and just tell you more like, you know, wasn't blessed with the playing background, wasn't blessed with the calling, and wasn't born with the family last name. And um, even that for you is passable, but I didn't grow up here. So there's some gap right there, you know what I mean? And, and also English, that's not my first language, didn't pick up until I was 14, 15. So 
I, I talk with a bit of an accent. So my point is, my, my basketball voice, they will never carry any meaningful weight because um, people are not going to take me seriously. And, and, you, and I, you and I know we, we, we didn't come from a, uh, a traditional basketball background. So there, there are people they say, no, the, the toughest thing in sport is to break in. They're not wrong, but for me, um, the toughest thing in sport is to have somebody to trust you. And I know me like this with all the backgrounds, you can just sit here and give me a bunch of statements. I will reject them all. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, I, I knew that I didn't like my chance. But um, man, a little bit later, I say to myself, you know, let me take the chance and reach out. So I went back to my website, which by the way, I don't have anymore. And um, I put together some of my better play reports, analysis, whatever I could find. If, if I thought they were good, at least know the, the better ones, put them together. And I spent money to print them out and also spent money on the envelopes, stamps, mails, letters, delivery fees, just mail to every NBA team and say, I would love to work for you. These are my samples and uh, feel free to keep them on file. And that was 2017 spring, by the way. And uh, one week, two weeks, one month, two months, I got no response. And I said, okay, I think that's my calling. Let me continue and be on the media side. It's, uh, I, I wasn't too sad, but uh, I, I knew it was hard, but at least I gave a good try. So I didn't have to sit here and wonder, oh, uh, I wish I could have done that 10 years later. So, um, but man, about five, Six months later, so September 2017, we're talking about. Out of the blue, Shane Batty reached out to me. He said, Henry, I got your stuff. Um, I'm so sorry, man. I, 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 I got so busy and, and I got reports like these, but yours is one of the better ones. And, and I remember that. And I, I, I need some help with GD scaling and GD analytics. And I think you and I should work together. And that's it, man. From there, Shane introduced me to Keith Askins, who's the scaling director. And that's my journey on the men's side. Three years and a half, never looked back. Um, and then on the women's side, I uh, more and more I got to know more and more people. And, and one of them was Coach Dan Hughes. We also had him on the show. And at the time, Coach Dan, he just got his job in Seattle, and he was looking for somebody who didn't mind working the WNBA summer schedule, uh, somebody who, who knows some scaling, stats, analytics, um, and basically just somebody who's young, who didn't mind. So I fit the bill. We got on the phone call, 40 minute talk, and the next thing I knew, he brought me over two seasons, one calendar year for three years. And uh, so that's there you go, that's my seven minute bio journey from Taiwan, rural countryside, shy person all the way to here. And now I got to talk to you. So there you go, man. I love the journey. It's incredible. I'm thinking about right, the changes that you went through to get to this point. Now you mentioned a couple interesting things about right, going through adversity and, and having to overcome that. And the, one of the biggest things you always tell me when I'm always like, Henry, like I'm, you know, thank you so much for taking interest in the show. You always bring it back to content creation, being a yeah. content creator. And how John, like when you're a content creator, like, like me and you, it's easy to, you know, to, to, to love this stuff or to, or to find these, these commonalities. I mean, yeah. when it comes to content creation, like the website you're building and sending all you know, your resume to, your, and, and your samples to all these teams, like what did that look like for you in actually making content? Like that's a huge thing that people miss out on. Yeah, with the content, that's a challenge that a lot of younger people, they reach out to me and say, yeah, I, I don't know what to start. I don't, I don't know what to write or YouTube videos or stuff like that. My, when I got my start, I would just sit in the one spot and just read all the columns, ESPN stuff. But when, when I read a lot, the more ideas and thinking just came up to me and I just started to do my writing, my analysis. But for those who really didn't know what to start or what to write, I would just say, just read anything that you find. And if you see something that, oh, that's interesting. Then you go back for like the last 20 years, 25 years, and you do the same thing. You find a trend. So for example, there was an article that says, you know, who are the people who don't block too many shots, but they're really good defenders. So for another word, their traditional stats um, underestimate their defensive impact. And they have a list of players from this year 
And if you're young, you can just, oh, let me go back and find the last 25 years of these categories or these events. So that would be my advice. In terms of reaching out to people, I didn't really know too many people. So I just went to the, the website. They have a the mailing address and that's it. Sometimes they hide it. If you can't find it, you just go online, find the staff directory where they have like a PDF staff page. You go there and then and it, it's, it's gotta be there. It's hiding somewhere. So yeah. Got media guides, media guides, and even more media. It's all yeah, in there. Media guides. Um, it's it's emails, there. you'll find, or just yeah. even once you have one person's email, right? It makes it right now. You can kind of figure it out yeah. uh, to where, right? And not, and not, like no one is truly untouchable, right? What with the right amount of with the with the proper networking outlook, uh, you'll, you'll you'll make it work. I'm um, in the industry and, and be able to find your way. Obviously, taking good networking practices to do that and making sure you're, you're respectful of people's time and making that all work out. But we, we of course, co- I hope we covered that enough on this show. A lot of so many guests yeah. come on and talk about networking. Uh, hopefully our listeners are, are pretty good at that by now. Even right, but when talking about right, high, building this content creation, getting your name out there, but then right, it finally worked, right? You get the call, you get the, you get the message from Shane Battier. Like, yeah. and, and I mean, he's not the only person, uh, like you mentioned a few others, um, to maybe be a mentor to you and help you through this process. Like who are some of those people that have maybe been able to be that guiding hand to you through an industry that you, you kind of need that to, to be successful in? Yeah, I got to, uh, I'm really blessed to have the right people around me, biggest supporters, Shane, Keith, and Coach Dan, especially Shane and Keith. They just, they, they changed my life. And if I sit here and talk about them more, I'm going to cry. And, and I mean it. It's, uh, they, they, they really uh, add a lot to my life. Um, I attribute all of my basketball and emotional growth to them because they, they saw something in me early when I didn't believe in myself. And, and to be frank, as I look back, I reflect from Taiwan, countryside, grew up shy, all the way to here, I, I feel like a force gone. It's really from nowhere, zero background, and right here. Just uh, it's a force gone journey. We both grew up in the countryside with farms in the back. We, we both have single mother households. Uh, we, we both grew up kind of poor, and uh, we're both low maintenance. Uh, and, and we also both have crucial figures in our lives. And their names are Dan. For Forrest Gump, you got Surgeon Dan. I got Coach Dan. Oh, and also Forrest Gump came from Alabama. And my mentor, Keith, he grew up in Alabama. So the state of Alabama, uh, it really does now to produce some of the finest role models. So uh, that's something my dream taught me to have that Forrest Gump mentality. You work hard, do the right thing, do something that you like. And, and always, Go outside, get to know different people, and then you stay with the right people. You stay with the genuine people. If you can't find them, then you be one because they'll come to you. That's, uh, that's something I learned. And, and, and basketball or in life, the wrong people, the wrong events, they will teach you the right lessons. And there was no doubt what doesn't work out for you will always end up working out for you. I mean, John, you and I, we're, we're old enough to be thankful of setbacks because they, they make us better. And they also redirect us to better people and better places. I mean, for me, all the rejections brought me to shame. So that paints a pretty cool picture. No, so I, I mean, I love that whole Forrest Gump the comparison. It's, I mean, it's so cool thing about, right, like, like the fact that you've been able to kind of see yourself and see those similarities with your, yourself and kind of this really famous American movie. I mean, what, kind of, maybe, what other ways do you kind of like associate yourself? Maybe have you kind of seen... Um, those maybe values like or, or maybe that, that story play out in your life yeah just uh be with the right people uh, as i can tell you. uh the the number one thing i'm so grateful for are the right people in my life i got all my most treasured stuff is right here i got a shoe box and these are letters from people in sport i'm very low maintenance aside from asking for a lifelong friendship i just say hey man write me a letter anytime you feel like it and four years later, I got a shoebox full of letters. So I got five people who are really important to me. Um, and uh, I want to start with my mom. Her name is Christine. We're, we're, we're immigrant people. And, and we came here with little money. And, uh, but we, uh, we didn't have a lot, but we always had enough. And uh, she actually encouraged me to pursue happiness. She said, hey, man, we worked so hard from Taiwan to here after World Away, gave up everything to be here. It's not about money. I want you to do what you like. And, uh, and, and the young Henry, that really touched me on so many levels. I, 
I, uh, at the time, I didn't know what my career would be like. But for her to say that, she, she really just uh, encouraged me to pursue and do something that I like. And, um, and a little bit later, I, I, I figured, you know, I, I want to give this a try to be in sport. And, and, and I went over to my mom. I say, hey, I, I want to give this a try, even though I got no qualification. And my mom heard me, and she said, I have no idea what this is. Well, that sounds like a great idea. So let's do this. <laughs> and um, man, my, my mom is built different because it's, uh, it is something that it's, it, it, it doesn't really parallel with the Asian immigrant mentality. And I'll touch that, touch that real quick. It's, um, it's, uh, it, it doesn't matter your, your race, where you're from. Every parent wants their kids to have rewarding careers. But for, for Asian parents, especially those with the, you know, the immigrant mentality, they don't want their kids to pursue potentially rewarding careers that one billion percent require volatile start. So that's why you don't see Asian people in Hollywood and filmmaking and, um, and politics and also in athletic coaching or scaling in the US. Because if you don't get family members in those professions, then you gotta really uh, struggle your first few years. And that's what I meant by that volatile start. But uh, my mom, she's, she's different. She's, uh, she has limited English. She knows nothing about sport. And yet she has the most profound influence on my sport career. So uh, thank you, mom. I love you to the moon and to the back. Yeah, and, uh, and now on the professional side, I got four people, I'm at Mount Rushmore, and they're all equal instrumental to me. It's, uh, yeah, and, and each of them carries different meaning to me. Um, and, and they're also just so equally vital to me. So I'm gonna do it the alphabet by last name, uh, first person, uh, Keith, oh my God. That's him right there. Another one, Tim Duncan. And I got even more somewhere in my room. And uh, man, he, he, he taught me about work ethic and being accessible. He, he's a, Keith and I, we got different upbringings and different cultures, but I relate to him a lot from the perspective of hard work, because that's what he's all about. And uh, I, I can sit here and just talk about how important he is and, and, and all everything about KA. But I'll be short, because of KA, he makes the word Hard work, uh, there's a different meaning when I hear it. Uh, I mean, when, when you try to make it, you gotta be in the mindset to live one day at a time. So you take it day by day and control what you can control. So it, it's cliche, there is no substitute for hard work, but I, I, I learned from KA that, you know, you work hard, especially when you're younger, it, it, it's not the best time of your life, but the best time for your life. So you do the work before the work, skip no steps. And once you get through that, you know you can do anything. And, and, and always remember, especially in basketball, it's the grind, but the best kind. And it rhymes. And uh, that's the first thing about work ethic. And I mentioned being accessible. So that's the second thing I learned from KA. He, uh, I remember the first time I met him, he said, Henry, anything you need me, text me, call me, email me, anything. And it's been like that ever since. He's uh, he he always responds to my messages within five minutes. I don't know how he does it. He's away for two percent of the time on the road, and uh, I'm a young person with less responsibility, and I can't even get back messages that quickly. But that's uh, that, that's ka. I mean, some people they only talk to you in their free time, and some people they free up their time to talk to you, and uh, and, and that's how. Keith takes care of me like that. So, uh, so, so thank you, Keith, for making it better. And uh, so after that, we got Shane. I mean, I, I don't know where to start. Shane, he taught me about, he's always about, you know, give back, appreciation, excellence. Uh, he's always about um, do good and do well. And um, we, uh, he's an email person. And but when it comes to emails, always multiple paragraphs, proper grammar. And he asked me so many questions. 
He, uh, he, he didn't have to do that. He, he could have just written, Henry, this is a good report. I hope you're doing well. But no, that's, that's, not, that's not Shane's style. He's always about investing people and make them better. And, uh, uh, and, and not, not only is Shane a, a really contagious encourager, uh, he, he's always about just knowledge. When I read his emails, it's like, man, I'm reading a textbook. And when, I, when, when we have phone calls or Zoom calls, it, it's like me sitting at the PhD lecture in basketball. And, and he's, uh, he's just so terrific. It's uh, uh, learning from Shane, interacting from Shane. It, it, it always inspires me just so many good thoughts when I talk to him. And, and he allows me to learn early what he picked up later. And, uh, and when, when I talk to people, like Zoom calls, or when I listen to podcasts, I always have a notebook when I take notes. If I hear something good, uh, I write it down. But for Shane, I got a special notebook just for him because he just he's he's always about good knowledge, good nuggets of information, and uh, I mean that's, that's something money can't buy. So Shin and I would have such a special bond, and, and and I would never trade that for anything else. So so thank you, Shane, for making me better and for taking a chance on me. Yeah. So thank you, Shane, for making me better and for taking a chance on me. So. Thank you. So we got Keith, we got Shane. So the next person we got is uh, Coach Dan Hughes. He, uh, he's always about empowering and impacting. And if you listen to his past interviews, nine out of 10 times, he always mentioned the word empower. Uh, that's what Coach Dan is all about. I remember when uh, uh, super early beginning, Coach Dan said, hey, Henry, doesn't matter when, we're going to talk every Monday. We're going to talk about basketball. We're just talk about life, like you and me, year round. Doesn't matter. Preseason, in the season, postseason, playoffs, off season, or after a really tough bad loss. Doesn't matter. You and me, Monday, we're going to talk. And it's been like that year round. That's, that's how, that, that's his style. He, uh, he takes the time to listen, get to know people. And uh, you, you know the book, it's uh, Tuesday with Maury. So for us, we got Mondays with Coach Dan. It's like, that's our officer. He's always about helping people and, and seeing other people do good. And, and basically he's like the, the WNBA version of Coach Popovich. He's, uh, he's so giving, so open. And now 20 years as a WNBA head coach. And right now you look at the league, half the WNBA team's head coaches all came from Coach Dan's coaching tree. So thank you Coach Dan for making me better. And I got my, Last person is Sean Morgan. He's my college best friend, even though we're two years apart. He's older, but uh, he, he's the person who encouraged me to pursue this super, super early in my, in my start. He, uh, even though I got no credential, no qualification, no nothing, he, he, he encouraged me to just say, you know, go, go, uh, go pursue that from one minority to another minority, from Sean Morgan to me. He has been that very first driving force in my journey. And, uh, and Sean taught me, it doesn't matter, we, we all start from somewhere. And, and you saw my LinkedIn bio, my bio reads, digging anywhere. So that's my respect and not towards Sean. He, he, he always reminds me why I started. And uh, uh, even though Sean's not in sport anymore, he, he has left his sport profession, but his impact on me continues to linger and continues to uh, be around me. And, and, and we talk all the time. We always have this really unique bond. So uh, even though he's not a sport, but I just want to uh, take the time to really uh, publicly thank Sean. Uh, I know you're listening to it, Sean. So, so all the love to you, your wife, Cece, and the Morgan family, because you, you guys have a special place in my heart. So, uh, so all the love and thank you, Sean. So Henry Wright, it's been incredible when thinking about all these mentors that you've had and all these people that have helped you get to where you are. And you've definitely learned so many lessons along the way to get you to this point. But I'm still curious as to like, what's some advice you'd give to a 20 year old Henry Ye that's just figuring all this stuff out? Like now you know this, but maybe back then you, you weren't too sure. Man, that's a good question. I, I, I used to didn't like myself. I, I, I used to hate myself because I, I didn't have the right background. Um, and uh, I, I wasn't that interesting uh, in sport. So, so that being said, I, I would overcompensate myself to make myself 
sound more smart, to make myself feel more accepted and more belong. And um, be before I go on, I have a story I want to interject, something that happened the, the last year, 2020, it was such a tough year, um, just really unthinkable time. And, and, and a lot of people, they just kind of, they, they feel lost, they, they lose their purpose, and especially for younger people. So that was the part when more and more people in Taiwan, they, they reached out to me. They, uh, a, a lot of younger students in Taiwan, they, they, they somehow they found me and they reached out to me and they just say, I, you inspire me. I, I wanna do what you're doing. Something like, you know, it's good to see an Asian person doing this. So I, I wanna be like you, but a few years later, or you know, I, I wanna, you inspire me to study sport management and, and pursue sport. So I, I would love some advice from you about, you know, study abroad in the U.S. or study, you know, sports. So, and, and not long after that, I found out I was the first person from Taiwan to be doing scaling um, and, and to be involved. And, and, and that was the part when I realized, man, I got to represent. It's, uh, I got to make sure I'm not the last person from Taiwan to be here. So, so that's the part when I see the importance of paying for. Uh, I, I make sure I always respond to everybody, no matter how, how naive, how rude they might sound. Uh, if they somehow they find me, they reach out to me. Uh, I'll just tell them, no, I'll, I'll take the time to talk to you. Uh, I don't have the answers, but you know, whatever you need, I'll be there and make the time to talk to you. And, and I'm, I'm going to quote my friend Sean Morgan. The point is, we'll start from somewhere. So just, uh, do that and and uh, even if I'm early pretty young my career but it's really vital for me to uh to turn around and help others because um well there was a time and not that long ago those people were me so so I gotta do the same um uh, whatever K.A. Shang and Code Den had done to me I gotta do the same for those people I gotta help them and, and, and those people, when they got older, they would help more people. And that's how you make the world better. So from there, I also learned something that, or at least the, 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 those five people, like my mom and you know, my three mentors and Sean, uh, I call them my, my all-star role models, my starting five. Something I learned from them is that successful people love mentoring others and, and that never stops. So, um, so, so that's something I, I learned from them is that there, there's two types of success. You got a local success that's about individual success. You, 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 you got straight A's, good grades, you have a good job title. That's nice. But uh, there's another success, which I call national success. It's about how many people you positively affected because your impact and, and your influence on other people as the best and it's the most valuable currency. So, uh, so I, I, I digress a, a bit, but now you heard that story. But because of that, I, I, I realized that, man, I should, I, should, I should be proud of myself because if I can embrace my no background the proper way, then I can make myself even more positively memorable. And that's even especially true for being a, a super minority like myself. So my message to all the listeners, and this is coming from a really shy person 15, 10, 20 years ago, from me to you guys, you got to be proud of your background. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. You got to be proud. Incredible, right? Thinking about this, this entire idea of you being a role model for other people and realizing, right, to have pride in where you've come from and all that, and, 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 right, and, and that really being a huge part of your identity. Um, and, rec and you recognizing that, which is incredible. And it's great to see yeah. the transformation you made over the last few years. I mean, taking it and taking that mindset on, I mean, allowing it to help you make serious strides in your career. Um, so, I mean, Henry, I mean, thank you so much. I mean, number one, for your support of the show, but number two, for taking the time to come on the show right now. Uh, this was a great conversation. It was fun hearing, right? we've spoken on the phone before, but it's obviously yeah. different hearing you walk through your career and, and how you got to where you are. Um, and how you've been able to be a role model to so many people. So thank you so much for joining the show. And we'll definitely be staying in touch soon. I'll, I'll see you in New York when uh, you're, you're, you're in New Jersey. So whenever we'll, we'll definitely find the time to meet each other. I'll get you your socks uh, and we'll continue this basketball journey together. Yeah, man. You're so welcome, John. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to Gen Z Hoops. 
Make sure to follow, like, and subscribe on Instagram, LinkedIn, and all major social media platforms at Gen Z Hoops. You can tune in and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and every other podcast platform on the planet. Get ready for the next episode.